हम बुलेट प्रूफ The great story here for anybody willing to find it and write about it and explain it is this vast right-wing conspiracy. That it's no secret that we're going up against some pretty powerful forces that will do and spend whatever it takes to advance a very different vision for America. I'll tell you a couple of stories about fraud. She didn't just delete tens of thousands of those emails. She wiped the server clean. What, like with a cloth or something? <laughs> personal emails are my personal business. You know, let's release everything. Let's let everybody in America see what I did for four years. Um, but as I, as I said, um, I saw it as a matter of convenience, and it was allowed. Others had done it. Um, so that, that's all I can say. The server um, will remain uh, private. The pr here's the problem. Their stories have not been the same up to this point. The State Department stories in the two cases have not been the same up to this point. That's why these two federal judges have personally gotten involved in an area where federal judges never get involved called discovery, the, the gathering of evidence pre-trial. That's done lawyer against lawyer without a judge involved. You have two cases here, one a federal judge appointed by Ronald Reagan, one a federal judge appointed by Bill Clinton, both saying the same things about her. There's too much deception here. Mrs. Clinton, when you speak to me, you will certify under penalty of perjury that you're telling the truth. We have turned over the server. They can do whatever they want to with the server to figure out what's there or what's not there. Going through the emails, um, there were over 60,000 in total sent and received. About half were work-related and went to the State Department, um, and about half were personal. When you speak to the public, you say, I turned over everything. That's, for the most part, a direct quote. When you talk to the public, you say, I turned over everything. That's for the you know, people investigating it to try to figure out. But we turned over everything that was work-related, every single thing. 90 to 95 percent of and my work-related emails were in the state system. If they wanted to that, see them, they would certainly have been able to do so. You know what? So. That, that, is, that is maybe the tenth time you have cited that figure today. It is. And I have not heard anyone other than you ever cite that figure. Wh who told you that 90 to 95 percent of your emails were, on the state, were in the State Department system? Who told you that? We learned that from the State Department and their analysis of the, of the emails that were already on the system. The Inspector General report found that less than 1%, less than 1% of State Department emails, record emails, were captured. So they give a number of less than 1% and you give a number of 90%. I have uh, absolute confidence that everything that could be in any way uh, connected to work is now in the possession of the uh, State Department. This pile represents the emails that you sent or received about Libya in 2011, from February through December of 2011. This pile represents the emails you sent or received from early 2012 until the day of the attack. There are 795 emails in this pile. We've counted them. There are 67 emails in this pile in 2012. And I'm troubled by what I see here. I can only conclude by your own records that there was a lack of interest in Libya in 2012. What difference at this point does it make? When I think back now to that day and what she knew, you know, it shows me a lot about her character that 
she would choose in that moment to basically perpetuate what she knew was untrue. This was a fast-moving series of events in the fog of war, and I think most Americans... How, how, how about more generally? Do you, do, you, do you think there's something you can do to get a majority of Americans to believe you're trustworthy? Hi, Hi Secretary Clinton. Would you sign this for me? Sure. What's your name? Um, if you can make it out to Christopher Stevens. I think you know him. Oh, no, just yeah, I'm not going to make it out to yeah. Chris Stevens. What difference does it make? Here it goes, here. Uh, the server contains uh, personal communications from my husband and me. The uh, only time I got on the internet, I did two emails, and I ordered Christmas presents from a reservation. <laughs> Otherwise, I found people said embarrassing things on emails. I didn't want to be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> How many angels dance on the head of a pin? I have, I, I have, uh, I have really uh, nothing to. Uh, I mean, how do you answer that? I feel sorry sometimes for the young people who, you know, believe this. Right. Uh, they don't do their own research. I am so sick. I am so sick of the Sanders campaign lying about me. I'm sick of. Do you think New York State should recognize gay marriage? No. No. Okay. I believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. I do not support gay marriage. It really is great how long you've supported gay marriage. Yes. I, I could have supported it sooner. Well, you did it pretty soon. Yeah. Could have been sooner. Fair point. <laughs> The unborn uh, person uh, doesn't have constitutional rights. Are you saying that a child on its due date, just hours before delivery, still has no constitutional rights? Under our law, that is the case. I was a Goldwater girl. I'm very proud that I was a Goldwater girl. Goldwater was against the 64 Civil Rights Act. 40,000 people, half of them Negroes, demonstrate against Goldwater. I am compelled to urge uh, Negroes and all people of good world to vote against him. His election would be a tragedy and certainly suicidal almost for the nation and the world. He's a very um, arrogant um, person to deal with, um, which I think is a combination of this vision of Russia and some fundamental insecurity. I could have told him he was a KGB agent. By definition, he doesn't have a soul. I mean, this is a waste of time, right? Как минимум, государственный деятель должен иметь голову. Mrs. Clinton has never been too graceful in her statements. When people push boundaries too far, it's not because they are strong. I remember landing under sniper fire. There was supposed to be some kind of a greeting ceremony at the airport, but instead we just ran with our heads down to get into the vehicles. Her arrival in Bosnia was not quite as dramatic as Clinton put it. Good to see you. Once again, her memory doesn't match our videotape. She and her daughter Chelsea lingered on the tarmac to greet U.S. military officials. Took photos. There was the group of seventh graders on the tarmac too. And then Senator Clinton walked to the armored vehicle where she did eventually dock and enter. During the parade in which she participated, her campaign roped off reporters so they wouldn't interfere with the candidate. Memory should always match the videotape. I have been a critic of NAFTA from the very beginning. I think that uh, uh, NAFTA is proving its worth. It was one of the highlights of President Clinton's first term, passage of the North American Free Trade Agreement, also known as NAFTA. Critic blame NAFTA for the loss of manufacturing jobs in industrial states including Ohio and Pennsylvania. Hillary Clinton helped get NAFTA approved. She held at least five meetings to strategize about how to win congressional approval. She helped the White House block opposition from labor and environmental groups and she was the featured speaker at a crucial meeting. Participants in that event said, quote, her remarks were totally pro-NAFTA. Was NAFTA a mistake? NAFTA was a mistake to the extent that it did not deliver on what we had hoped it would. Your opponents are saying that that's really part of a larger pattern with you, that you often avoid taking firm positions on controversial issues. Mm -hmm. um, they are going to people showing videos of Donald Trump insulting Islam and Muslims in order to recruit more radical jihadists. In fact, checkers have said that she was wrong. All my grandparents, you know, came uh, over here and... Turns out only one was an immigrant, three were not. 
And then, frankly, there are those who are saying the best thing that could happen to us is be attacked by somebody. <laughs> you know, just bring it on, because that would unify us, it would legitimize the regime. That's the reason I say, if anybody's going to do it, we ought to do it, because we have the capability of doing it. You know, we're not going to give anything up, and in fact, we're going to provoke an attack, because then um, we will be in power for as long as anyone can imagine. I represented New York, and I represented New York on 9-11. When we were attacked, where were we attacked? We were attacked in downtown Manhattan, where Wall Street is. I did spend a whole lot of time and effort helping them rebuild. That was good for New York, it was good for the economy, and it was a way to rebuke the terrorists who had attacked our country. 9-11 was bad. I agree with that. It's time for the United States to start thinking of Iraq as a business opportunity. Hi, Secretary Clinton, will you release a transcript of your paid speeches to Goldman Sachs? Uh, uh, no, there's a lot of controversy over the speeches. Just uh, in July, New Hampshire, you told the crowd you, quote, take a backseat to no one when it comes to progressive values. I take a backseat to no one when you look at my record and standing up and fighting for progressive values. Last month in Ohio, you said you plead guilty to, quote, being kind of moderate and center. Do you change your political identity based on who you're talking to? No, I think that uh, like most people that I know, I have a range of views, but they are rooted in my values and my experience. You know, I get accused of being kind of moderate and center. I plead guilty. Just for the record, are you a progressive or are you a moderate? I'm a progressive. <laughs> I represented Wall Street as a senator from New York, and I went to Wall Street in December of 2007, before the big crash that we had, and I basically said, cut it out. Quit foreclosing on homes. Quit engaging in these kinds of speculative behaviors. Now, who's exactly to blame for the housing crisis? I think there's plenty of uh, blame to go around. Home buyers who paid extra fees to avoid documenting their income should have known they were getting in over their heads. Are you a progressive or are you a moderate? I'm a progressive. Of course we have to deal with the problem that the banks are still too big to fail. We can never let the American taxpayer and middle class families ever have to bail out the kind of speculative behavior that we saw. But we also have to worry about some of the other players. AIG, a big insurance company, Lehman Brothers, an investment bank. There's this whole area called shadow banking. That's where the experts tell me the next potential problem could come from. You were against same-sex marriage, now you're for it. You defended President Obama's immigration policies, now you say they're too harsh. You supported his trade deal dozens of times, you even called it the gold standard. Now suddenly last week you're against it. Will you say anything to get elected? Well actually, I have been very consistent over the course of my entire life. Time and time again, you hear one thing in speeches and then you see a campaign that has the worst kind of tactics, reminiscent of the same sort of Republican attacks on Democrats. Well, I am here to say that it is not only wrong, but it is undermining core Democratic principles. Since when do Democrats attack one another on universal health care? I have looked at, I've looked at the legislation that Senator Sanders has proposed, and basically he does eliminate the Affordable Care Act, eliminates private insurance, eliminates Medicare, eliminates Medicaid, TRICARE, Children's Health Insurance Program. This is, this is what drives people crazy. It drives them crazy, you know? Why not just come out and lay it out? This is what makes people distrust not just these politicians, but Washington, but the administration, but anybody who even raises their hand and testifies under oath, believing you're not being straight with me. In conclusion, Congress is supposed to provide oversight. The voters are supposed to provide oversight. And you are supposed to provide oversight. That's why you have special liberties, and that's why you have special protections. Uh, I am not surprised that the President of the United States called this a phony scandal. I'm not surprised that Secretary Clinton asked, what difference does it make? I'm not even surprised that Jay Carney said Benghazi happened a long time ago. I'm just surprised at how many people bought it.